What's up, everybody? What's up, what's up? Let me get this microphone on here. Cool. And uh, welcome, welcome, I guess, to another live stream. And so last week, we went over this uh, face, um, and we did it in a monochrome, you know, black and gray um, colors. So this week, we have the same stencil, the same image, but we're gonna take it a step further and we're gonna throw some colors at it. So again, um, if you haven't watched the first video, if you're new to the channel, this link in this image is uh, down below in the video description. Uh, you'll find all these helpful links, uh, including the link where you could download this image for free. Um, you also find links to the paints, the airbrushes, all that good jazz. Using those links uh, gives a kickback to the channel, so it helps bring you more videos like that. Also, <clears throat> I gotta send a shout out to our sponsors. So obviously we have CreateX Colors, uh, who provides the paint for these videos. And then we also have... Um, Oh yeah, uh, we have Super Clean, who provides some of the cleaning products for rinsing out the airbrushes and stuff like that. I almost blanked out there. That was kind of weird, kind of rude. Um, but yeah, and as always, you know, we provide these videos for free. Uh, if you want to help and support the channel, of course, you can use those links below. You could order the stencils available at Mike'sBrush.com as well as join the Skull Squad. So big shout out to the Skull Squad members um, for being part of the Skull Squad and helping provide new and better content constantly for free for all you guys to use and to have for ages to come. Um, so anyway, we're gonna start with the lips, right? So I have the lips here kind of zoomed in on the camera. And we're going to go ahead and walk through this one more time. So unlike previous times we've done this, I'm kind of kind of stressed um, to keep the pieces because we're more than likely going to stick them back on. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. One big tip, too, before you try this at home and before I get started is to bring up the image on your phone um, or a tablet or print it out so it helps to have the image um, readily available. Uh, I like using the phone because you could uh, you could zoom in right so you, you could do the the pinch the pinch and and like the outside pinch. What's up James Melton how's it going man? Um, you know, the, the reverse pinch, the stretch, uh, to really get zoomed in on it. Um, and yeah, so I recommend bringing it up on your phone like this. And then you could do, you see, you could zoom in. And I've, I've made the image pretty high quality. Uh, so the stencil and the image, as you can see, every little wrinkle dot every mistake on their makeup or whatever. So you could get really, really detailed if you want to. You could pinch it in and focus in on a spot, All right? So obviously today we're gonna focus in, go back, we're gonna focus in on the lips here. All right, so I'm just gonna kind of leave it here on the lips. Could even do it sideways. I think it'd be better for the lips like this. And yeah, we're gonna just put this, I'm just gonna put this right below here so I can kinda keep it in my eye, my peripheral. So, I'm gonna start with the red and I'm gonna start with the lips. So the inside of this mouth here, right, these areas, 
They're just a really, really dark red, but we ain't ready to do dark red yet. We're gonna do red. So we're gonna do, cut the lips out and we're gonna use Createx. I would say Wicked Red is probably a good match for this, but we're probably gonna mix it up with a little bit of Wicked White and Wicked Black to really give us our tones here. And we'll go over that once we get to that. For now, all I'm doing is cutting this out. All right. And I decided to cut it out by hand, so a lot of people just keep asking how did I cut it? And it's just like, uh, I keep telling you to use your blade. I bring the blade out. And today we want to keep these pieces. So I'm only cutting it in a certain way. Uh, so all we got to do is take off the lips and leave the whole interior of the mouth here behind. all the way like that make sure it doesn't move what did i do over here there you go but make sure you save it so we're just going to put this aside over here make sure not to uh mess it up so again if you need to find the paper link to the paper that we're using today is down below we've printed the stencil out just on a regular piece of print paper but the nice paper that we're actually painting on uh, you'll find the link to that and the information of that down below. So I'm going to start with some Wicked Red. So let me get the Wicked Red out here. Um, oh, it's on. I hope the music's not too loud. I feel like it's I feel like it's just a little bit too loud. Let me turn it down a little bit. There we go. The music's more for me than anything else. I just don't want to sit here in silence. So we're going to be using 4011 reducer today. And we're going to be starting off with some Wicked Red as a base color. And again, it helps to have your image zoomed in. And for this base red here, I'm probably going to do like a three to one mixture paint to reducer. And I'm not mixing up a whole lot because we're just doing this one little piece right here. We're just doing the lips and it won't take very much paint at all. Make sure I shake it, right? Shake it up real good. Shake it, shake it, shake it. So I hope everybody's had a good week. I am almost done with the Prince car. Um, I went out and did a wall this weekend. Those of you that follow us on social media have already seen it. Oh, I did post a video here too. Duh. Duh. Um, yeah, so that was a lot of fun. All I'm going to do here is kind of go in with the red and we're just going to hit the edges really good. Just something on the nozzle here. There you go. So I'm just going to go around the edge, nothing heavy just yet, just kind of giving us a good little base right all the way around. Obviously we're going to kind of try to follow the tones on our picture, right? You see how I have it down here? I'm kind of just looking at it. And <clears throat> if you really want to, instead of printing out this, uh, right, this lines, you could just print out the picture itself. And if you wanted to, you could really just, you know, cut out all them definitions in the lips to give you a 
better idea. Um, but all I like to do is kind of come in with some nice little lines going up and down. And we're not really super committed because, you know, we're just regular red right now. And we've reduced it a little bit. So it's going to take a little bit of build up to really get it uh, to be red, right? If you move kind of quickly and you just build up your strokes and just looking down I see where it's going I'm, I'm just kind of applying it as I see it moving down and I'm kind of using the little strokes to shade it in as I'm moving around right so I'm not just kind of just making lines I'm kind of shading it in line into line And it's okay to really get the design kind of, um, you know, it doesn't have to be super red right away, right? So we're going to build it up. And once we get, a, you know, a little bit of white mixed into this red and build up the pinks and then get a little bit of black, um, your lips will really start to take some more color. So just... Keep in mind that we're going to go in back in with some more colors, but the first layer, this definition does definitely show through. So if you want to keep it nice and sharp, just kind of hit those little lines, those little, they're not cracks. What are these little indentions when on one's lips called? I don't know. Well, it's all I'm doing is just kind of building those in. See it? And here, right, you can use your stencil here. See how that lip is cut. Put that back in place. And you can fill in that red right there. And then you could haze it over, right? So over your same little cracks here, you could use the Wicked Red to kind of haze over what you've already done to kind of darken it in, but you won't lose the definition or that detail that you did, right? It's just kind of kind of darken everything all to in together. So we're just going to kind of move to the bottom lip. Again, the bottom lip has these bright white highlights on it, right? So if you print out this picture, you can just cut those out and leave it behind. Um, I giggle, but honestly, if, if you want to dedicate yourself and cut all those out and leave them in there, I'm not even going to hate. That's just a lot more work than I really want to do. Um, and I feel like it's, it's at the end, you're just robbing yourself of that little bit of freedom. So I just try to follow it as best as I can. But I know going in that I'm going to hit it with white um, for some white highlights. Um, so that's just the way I like to do it. But if, if again, if you want to cut out all those highlights there, the way they are, um, by all means. But again, we're just going to start building in the bottom lips, little by little. Just going around. And like I said too, this might be a two-parter video. We might get to a point where, um, you know, we've been going for a while, so I might have to stop. And then uh, we'll continue it on next week. There's still uh, videos coming, though, between here and there. So I'll make sure to link them up, though.
So if you watch one, it should recommend you the other. I'll try my best. So just building it in little by little. So it helps to hold your stencil down. Now you can use your finger or you can use like the, the bottom of the blade here. Right, obviously if you use the blade itself, you risk cutting it, but if you use the bottom part and just kind of use it to hold it in place like this. I'm trying not to block the camera, but you, know, you get it to just hold it in place um, and try to be as steady as you can. Just if you get some little tiny stencils like this or you get an area where the stencil wants to come up. Good little tip right there. Just to take your blade and hold it down. Alright, so the first thing I want to do is in this same cup right here, right? We're not going to add any more red or nothing but you see there's still red in there there's still a little bit you know it doesn't take much to cover that in there um, obviously if, if you have a whole bunch left you know you're gonna want to take a lot of it out um, but all we need is a little bit right we're just gonna take a little bit of red we're gonna take some white here and we're gonna mix up a nice little pink and we're just gonna drop in a I'd say about five, six drops of, of white into our little cup mixture here. And it's just going to give us a little bit of a whiter red, like a more, um, you know, a pink, but not all the way pink uh, the way you would think. And this is just the first way we're going to alter this red real quick. Um, and then we're probably going to reset it back to red and then add some black or purple and I'll show you guys how that looks make sure we shake it up really good All right make sure we get a little spray out going and so here we have the lips and you can see that red there and then we have this one so it's just a little bit I don't even know if you can tell on camera, but it's just a little bit more, uh, has more of a bubblegum kind of look to it. And all we're gonna do is this, um, is for kind of these white areas here where it's lighter, right? In the picture you have like these little white highlight spots. Um, it's good to build those in. Right, and we're just gonna kinda get those little areas really nice and in there and you might not see much of a difference at first but really pays off once you really get it all in there you don't want to go too pink with it either because right, the whole goal is to kind of match the picture but just giving it that little bit See there that you can kind of, it goes over the red a little bit, but it doesn't really kill it out. Obviously we're still going to build up the little white highlights and stuff, but we want to dull out that, you know, that color of the white of the paper. Right, we don't want a super bright white. Obviously down here where the white highlights are, that's okay if it stays white because we're just going to hit it with white. So we're going to want those to be nice and bright. But all this other stuff, having that nice pink tone, you can kind of see it in there. Um, it really is just going to give the next color a little bit more pop. So speaking of next color, we're going to go ahead and see how it's more of a bubble gum. I don't know if you can tell that on camera, but it's more of a bubblegum kind of a color here, but I'm gonna flush this out, right? So as I said, we don't really need much. All you needed was just a little bit of that bubblegum color. We're gonna rinse this out. 
right, so I'm just gonna take some good old soapy water here. Again, we're going to start off. I'm just going to start off by adding a little bit of reducer into the cup. A little bit. Just like a few drops. We just want a little bit of reducer in there. Because we're not going to mix up a whole bunch of this red either. I'm going to take some Wicked Red. We're going to do about maybe, you know, good little five. Let's just, let's say ten drops of red. And we're going to throw in, ah, the Wicked Black. We're going to add one, one dot, one, one little, just one drop. One drop. That's probably, that's a, that's a big drop, but whatever, we'll take it. So all we need, gonna cover it back up and we're gonna shake it up real good. Now if you if you don't want such a dramatic red, if you want to kind of build it up, right? If you want to do maybe two or three colors of red, you could use some purple, right? So adding a little bit of purple to the red, just like again, one drop, two drops, maybe not too much, um, will really give you a nice uh tone as well but again we're just going to come back we have our nice see here where's the lips we have the original red the bubble gum and then we have this nice whatever you call this um, and we're going to use this to start building up the shadows get this piece of paint off the needle here okay so again we're just going to start from this the, the right side here across the top lip and if you'll notice this right along the bottom there's a nice shadow and we're going to kind of bring up the cracks off of that shadow so since we're not using a black you know it's just a really dark red it's still going to look black almost on the lips but it's a little bit more lenient and it'll shade a lot better going into our lips as well as actually matching our color right so bring those little cracks or I don't I hate calling them cracks because they're not cracks uh, but uh, you know bring those little ridges of the lips going up and down Hey, yo, do we have a lip doctor in the house? What are these things on the lips called here? Let me just use that to go up. Now, obviously, if you use some purple instead of the black right away, um, you'll have a nice darker red. And you'll find it even easier to shade these in, but you're still going to have to come back in with a little bit darker tone and add some black. But you can build up more depth within the lips that way. But again, this is already going to be a two-parter video. I don't really want to take too much. Um, but again, we're going to get nice, quick, and easy results. Um, throw some time at this little stencil here and you'll have a nice painting so just looking up here at the top there's like some stippling here so you just go ahead and do yourself a little bit of stippling right it's like the cracks you know kind of just kind of basically paint what you see 
a little bit of shadow across the top and mixing up your colors so you have the right colors to just kind of shade and build everything in and we might go back with some wicked red over the top before we do our white highlights just to even everything out again so to get these nice fine lines that's why we started with a little bit of reducer got a nice and reduced paints we got our pressure at about 15 psi and we're just working really close and nice and slowly All right, just kind of work our way around obviously on this side uh, you have that shadow again so if you want to use your stencil right this is why we keep it onto the side bring it back here and I'm pretty sure we're gonna end up sticking this back on in a second but bring it back drop your shadow in there and there's also a shadow coming up off of this stencil going up right off the edge like so just like that you remove that right away you get the, when you remove the stencil you get that little dramatic sharp edge effect um, but again working on our way down and down here on the l bottom of the right you got these three indentions right so if, if you want to get um, again if you wanted to print it out and work directly off of the picture you can so you know exactly where these go I'm just gonna kinda approximate you know and I think we'll be alright build up our nice shadowy tones around the lips because the lips are red but there's a lot that goes into actually red lips right you got all these little shadows going around these ridges on the lips, these little defining factors. And all I'm doing is using a little bit of fine lines, and a little bit of dagger strokes, and a little bit of dots. I'm just kind of bringing it all around I'm using my phone again, just kind of wherever I'm moving, right? I move my phone kind of keep focus of what I'm doing a little bit of shadows over here uh, we're gonna go around Now we're gonna leave this red, um, this dark red, we're gonna leave this because we're gonna need it. Um, so if you wanna save it in a cup, if you need, need another airbrush, um, if you don't have another airbrush, you know, it's good to save it in a cup or something. If you have another airbrush, just bust out another airbrush. We're gonna take some of the good old wicked red. And again, we're just gonna take a little bit, pop it in here, no reducer just yet. All right, just a little, little bit few drops doesn't take much obviously if you're making this painting big you're gonna need a little more but we're just gonna take a little bit of the wicked red and we're just gonna lay it in over that dark red to just to kind of even it out simple nothing too crazy Trying to drown out all the bubble gum. You might leave some bubble gum 
shine it through and then we're gonna need some white so you know that's why I said only just you know little drops that's probably good we're gonna take some white and mix in some white here so I'm gonna flush this out again we still have the dark red in there I'm just flushing out this red red You can see they're already looking pretty good. So all we're going to do is use a little bit of white for the highlights. But then we're also going to use it as kind of the base color going forward for the teeth. Where we're going to add a little bit of color onto the teeth. Right, because the teeth are not just white, they have some shading going into them. So we're gonna go ahead and add that shading. So I'm just gonna take a little bit of white. It's just wicked white, straight out of the bottle. Again, I just need a little bit, so just a few little drops. gonna do our white highlights on our lips All right so just go in nice and carefully should be if you use the white straight out of the bottle it's real easy to just cut in white highlights and if you go back over it just a little bit of time it's gonna get really bright you don't really need to do too much on top just a little bit and then obviously you got the bottom you got a lot going on they obviously had some really harsh lights on there but that's all right we're gonna work on through it just kind of do your best if you cut them out, you could get a really good, um, really accurate, really good, you know, effect. But both ways is fine, I would say. a way of sticking onto the needles so make sure you clean off your needle if it's if you notice there's a bunch of white buildup on it that will affect your spray through so just make sure you get that off there be careful when wiping it away cool so there we got our our lips pretty much in there well, you know what maybe I Maybe I think I want to just accent our little indentions here a little bit. Maybe went a little too much, but it's fine. <clears throat> so here I'm going to cut out these uh, kind of these parts that are not teeth, right? So we have this piece here, this piece here. So basically like the inside of the mouth and her gums, which is basically just this one piece. And we can go ahead and take that off. Oh. Not the whole thing, just that. Can put this back right where it goes. Like so, and put our lips back. All right, so this is where it starts getting tricky again. But if you really want to get it good, a little bit of tricky is all you need. 
so get your lips back in this place. Um, using frisket really helps because frisket, some frisket, I shouldn't say all frisket, but like there's like that plasticky frisket. Uh, really, it's easy to just remove it, put it back, remove it, put it back, remove it, put it back. Um, yeah. But anyway, we're going to take that red that we have mixed up. And we're going to kind of fill in this area here with it. You'll notice it's a really dark red. It's not, it's not really a black. But it's still going to contrast good with our lips. Fill in all these little spots here. No problem, nice and easy. Bam. Alright, so we can remove our teeth. And I'm just going to use a nice shield here to do our shadow effects on our teeth. We're going to still leave that red in there um, for a little bit of shading that we have to do on these gums. But I'm going to take that white that we have. I'm going to use a little bit of white. I'm going to throw a little bit of reducer, right, because this is unreduced. So just a little bit of reducer, about one to one, not a whole lot. Then I'm going to take some of this Wicked Detail Flesh Tone. All right, so we're going to need the Universal Flesh Tone and the Detail Flesh Tone um, to achieve our photo here. But we're just going to take, in order to shade our teeth here, we're just going to take a little drop of this into our white. Yeah, just not do too much. Maybe just one drop into our reduced white. Then we're gonna shake it up. And it's gonna give you a nice little bone-like kind of color. Um, and yeah, I feel it's good to introduce people into mixing colors. Because I think a lot of people start having fun when they realize they could uh, start mixing their own colors and stuff. And they could really get accurate. So I'm trying to get a good blowout here. Good flow through. And maybe it's still just a little bit too light. Yeah, it's still a little too light. I'm just going to drop one more little drop of this in here. We want it to be light, but we don't want it to be that light. So let's do one more drops, two drops. But all we're looking for is a nice bone color so that we can shade these teeth in. We're also going to use a little bit of this uh, dark red here to shade and reinforce the bone color a little bit. There you go, it's a little bit better. So you can see here, it's just a little bit darker here. All right, it's almost like a peach color, almost, but it's really white. So I'm just gonna use this color to go in here and shade in the teeth, right? Again, looking at my reference, there's obviously some white highlights going in here. Just a little bit, right? And you can see if you zoom in on that picture, her teeth are not, right? Just like everybody's teeth, they're not super pearly white, like it's unrealistic um, to think that that's how your teeth are gonna look. Everybody's teeth has a little bit of color. That's quite okay. All right, so we're just going to shade them in a little bit all the way around. I don't know how well that you can tell on camera. Let me move the screen. You can't see. 
Oh, good job. Good job, man. Turn it off. There you go. Yeah, you can see it a little bit. So all I'm gonna do is take a little bit of this red, this dark red here that we have mixed, and I'm gonna just bring it down off of the gum line there to shade in our teeth. Shade a little bit off of the top, in between the cracks of the teeth there. And there's a little bit of a shadow right here separating these two. So it's going around the top. Now be real gentle when using this. You don't want your teeth to be all dark. But we do want a little bit of those streaks in there. Just to make sure we give it definition. Cool. And I think we're done with this red. So we're going to rinse this red out. And we're going to load up some white. Some good old white. So we can do the white highlights on the teeth. And we can move on to another part. I'll show you guys what the lips and the teeth look like. Here in one sec. So, should have something like that. If you have this line here, that's okay. Obviously, do a better job than me uh, realigning your stencils back in place. I will say that up front. But using our shield here, there's nothing we can't fix. Also, we have the original stencil. We can just kind of go in here with a little bit of black. And cut that in real quick. that real quick just do one little drop of black just so that we can cut this in Let's see if this glue has any power left Ooh, perfect I'm just gonna take a little bit of black now if you still have some of that red use that red if unfortunately I was already almost done rinsing out so we're just going to use that in there right up in there cool now I can rinse this out up a little bit of white again straight out of the bottle get the nice bright white highlights just rinsing out the black got to really rinse out when you're switching from black to white so make sure you rinse good if you made the same mistake even if you're rinsing out that red and we don't need a whole little a whole lot so I'm just dropping a whole little bit of drops in there make sure we got a good spray through Right. And then we're going to cut in our white highlights on our teeth here. Can't 
can't even see that it is there you go Bam! That looks really good. Now obviously I wish I could just peel off everything to show you just the lips, but that's not what we came for. We're here for the whole shebang. So before we move forward, we are going to cut off this corner piece over here, as well as the hair over here, this very top corner piece here. And we're just gonna go ahead and hit this in with a little bit of black. So kind of this piece at the bottom here and this piece around the fingers. Around the fingers. Bam. Take that off. Bam. And we're just going to we're just going to lay some black in real quick probably reduce it a little bit just so it looks nice and smooth not all nice and speckled so just <laughs> gonna once again rinse out this white <laughs> oh man so much rinsing I should really leave you know what I'm gonna leave this white in here and use a different airbrush no actually oh man are we gonna make it to white highlights today I don't think we will. No, I'll just rinse this out because we're gonna need it. We're gonna need it for different colors. Decisions have to be made. So we're gonna need this to stay for the universal flesh tone. Then we're gonna need one for the detail flesh tone, as well and as well for the dark, the dark shadow tone that we're gonna be mixing up. Oh yeah. But the lips look good, don't they? The lips look good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. Just trying to get that white out of there. little pinhole on these lids sure like to get clogged don't they I wish they made one that didn't <laughs> I wish they made something there that wasn't just a pinhole and it was maybe even easier to clean I don't know maybe I'm asking for too much innovation on something as simple as the freaking cap Anyway, mix up some black. We don't need a whole lot, so I'm just gonna do a couple drops. Well, then we're gonna do a few drops of reducer as well. Gonna make a nice smooth black. You notice too, we, we did all these lips and there's no black, right? Like there's no actual black on the lips. I used black to re-outline our our thing here but we didn't use any black on the actual lips you're gonna use a nice red you use a nice bubble gum and then you use that nice dark color you know to kind of give it all definition and all combined together you get all these tones kind of flexing in together so, right, so starting down here on this corner all I'm gonna do is take some black here and we're gonna shade that in going that way nothing crazy just kind of going in so 
Same thing on the top. Now this is this is the hair, so if you want to give it some strokes, right side to side. Bam, go ahead. And I'm gonna do strokes and then I'm gonna just do a little shadow going off. This is gonna be way off to the side over here. I won't really even be a focus, a focal point. Just leave that off over to the side over there. Cool. Oh man, so now we have the great, the great and amazing task of building up um, this nose and eye section, right? So we're going to kind of work from a, a darker tone here. I'm trying to get this thing to stay in place, but it's not really. There you go. Um, right, so the nose here has these dark nostrils in the center. The eyes have these dark lines going around. And there's a little shadow line going around here. Um, but everything has to be filled in with color, right? Unlike when we're doing the monochrome picture, um, you can get away with just doing some some shading and then kind of building up around when you're doing it this way you want to build up the colors and then you want to bring in colors around um, but you don't want any of those colors kind of overlapping too much where they don't actually do um, so even though you have the, the shield the stencil to kind of help you out uh, there's only so much uh, that it can do and from there, you're going to want to use, you know, your, your hand shields to really help you build up some of those definitions, um, as well as your freehand skills to kind of just stay off of some of those areas once you've done them. All right. So I'm going to peel back the nostrils. I'm going to go ahead and cut off the center portion of the nostrils. And we're going to start off by mixing up our dark color here. Just kind of we're going to be using this left nostril. I'm just going to cut out the lines and then we're going to bend it down. Right. This is right one. We're just going to cut off that side there. We're going to go ahead and cut out the other lines, but we're not going to we're not going to bend it down just yet. We're just going to leave it like that. On these eyes, I'm going to go ahead and take off these center portion of the eyes. And we kind of get a lot done uh, since we're going to have to load up black first to, to really get, you know, the darkest points. And we could go ahead and knock out as much of this as we can before we move on to a more centralized area. So I'm just Again, just to show you how it is, freehand, free time, like real time, cutting out the eyes. You see this top, this this between these two lines. I'm just gonna go ahead and cut that right out. Take that right off of there. Bam. Same thing on the other side. We got these two lines leading up to the nose right here. And this, what this is, is the makeup. There's like an eyeliner, right? So there's a really dark line kind of leading through there. And that's pretty much it for the black. We don't need to cut out any more of the, anything else. We're just gonna do a nice black shadow right around the edge here. We're going to do a black shadow right around the edge here. Uh, fill in, obviously, the pupils in black. And then we're going to fill in this top over the eyes in black. Nothing too crazy. Um, and what was I doing here? Is this black? I'm 
think I was rinsing out black there. So all I'm going to do is just take a little bit of black. Just like one drop. It doesn't even need to be one drop. So it's going to hit one little edge right there. Nothing too crazy. Hit the edge around like that. Fill in the pupils. Fill in that eyeliner across the top. Bam, simple. All right, so here we have our black, right? And there's just like, there's the black around the edges, but it's all reduced. Um, but there's maybe like, I could almost see the needle sticking out. There's like less than a drop of black. And all I'm gonna do is take some of this detail flesh tone, right? And I'm gonna throw this in with our black here. I'm gonna say a good maybe 10 to 12 drops and then I'm going to add in you know about 5-6 drops of reducer you know good 4 to 1 mixture of paint to reducer uh, just to get it to flow and we're going to get our darkest tone for the skin here and we don't need a whole lot of this so you don't need to mix up a whole ton um, obviously if, if you want to save this for later for a different painting you can um, but I you know it's not really a hard mixture just five six seven drops of that detail flesh stone you throw in a little bit of black and you're gonna end up with a color let's see here what can we compare so we have our reds there you're gonna kind of end up with almost a black but it's like a muddy black once it starts spraying through. You'll notice there. Let me just actually add. Yeah, you see it's a muddy black in there. Let me just add a little bit more. More of this detail flesh tone, just a little bit. There's probably a little bit more black than I thought there was in there. But you want like, it's almost like a muddy black. It's almost like gray mud. And again, this is just for the really darkest areas of, of the skin. There we go. So you can see here, it's not really a black. It's more like a mud. It's the best way to des describe it. It's more like a muddy tone. You see the black. And this is kind of like a mud. And we're going to use that to fill in our nose on the right hand side and then we're going to bring that same shadow just bring it down and around and then we're going to fold over our the rest of the nostril on this side and then hit the edge there bring it down and around nothing too crazy again again Gonna cut this nose piece off over here. Right. Bam. And I'm not gonna hit that with that color, no. I'm gonna I believe this is a mixture of white and then So I'm going to rinse out this airbrush real quick, take out this color. And so I'm um, this separate airbrush, and we're probably going to use three different airbrushes um, for the skin. But in this particular one, I'm going to put the detail flesh tone in, and then we're going to need another one for the universal flesh tone. And I'm gonna hit the edges with the detailed flesh tone because it's just a little bit darker. Right, that's why it's called details. I'm just gonna throw a little bit in there 
and then we're gonna throw a little bit of reducer about four to one mix gonna shake it up we want it to flow out really good and nice we're gonna bring start bringing in the nose details here so starting here on this nose Right, so we had the mud, and now we have our flesh tone there. And if we bring our reference back up, so we're gonna hit the edge real quick with this, just nice and softly. Then we're gonna take that mud, right? And again, just really on the edge, Softly hit that edge with that mud just to kind of extend the, the detail flesh tone out. Nothing too crazy. It's all, we're, all we're giving ourselves again is markings so that we could go back and paint those in. But we need the markings so we know where to paint. Cutting out our eye, you see me cut that bottom of the eye and then bring it up. And then I'm gonna bring down to the nose here, this whole piece, this whole side of the nose here. All right, peel it back. If it'll peel back. Come on, lift up. There you go. Get that to go over and fold it over like so. Nothing too crazy. Bam. Then again, we're going to take our detail flesh tone. And we're going to hit, again, use, zoom in on your nose over here, right, with your your phone your tablet or if you have a picture make sure you get really close up on that nose and just look at that edge and look at what's happening we have a little bit of a shadow right now I'm just focusing the real 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 edge I'm not worried about what's going on over here just right up on that edge what's up what's happening going up into the eye all the way it's a nice little edge here right and then there's a few spots where we have our mud color, right? Kind of just right on that edge there. And that's what's going to really give it that definition. Just a little bit there, a little bit there. And say you feel like you did a little bit too much mud color. Um, just hit it back over with a little bit of the detail flesh tone and it'll dull it out just a little bit um, and give it a nice more kind of um, blended in kind of a look you know it'll it'll look more natural <sighs> again giving ourselves markings right so I'm probably gonna mark off the face and then we're gonna have to I've been going a little over an hour we'll probably give it another half an hour um, but we're probably gonna have to call part two and continue it next week but we're gonna cut this eye markings out right here I'm gonna go ahead and just peel this down here Again, just on your phone or tablet or whatever, just move it over here. And you'll see that that one goes folded over that way. You cut this one out. And then if you want to bring in some cuts going this way, just so you can fold it over. Like so. Now again, if you have a shield, obviously you could just remember where those are or approximate and then use a shield to cut that 
I'm going to take a little bit of a detail flesh tone here. Going to hit that edge on both sides. I don't think we need to hit it with the mud color on either one of these sides. I just think we need to get that nice edge in there. So we know where it is. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just decide again. Just like in the monochrome one to cut out my eyebrows just to give myself a good idea of where they are All right and then we are going to peel off her face so cut out all around her fingers All right gonna have that finger there there's this finger that goes underneath her hair make sure to leave that behind peel off her face it's like she's done clubbing we could just peel off her face oh don't forget to cut around the eyes almost forgot make sure you leave your eyes behind but we can go ahead and peel off her face bam so you want to save this because just in case you get lost or something, it helps to have them. just you can just place it back and remark where you were and, and kind of get yourself going in the right direction. So as you can see though, you know having those markings that we've been talking about um, really changes it up. So I know you can kind of see it on the left hand side, but if I go to the like this and show you, you really get a good idea of where everything's supposed to be. So again, we're gonna use a little bit of freehand and um, start filling this in. The lips, right? So remember I told you not to throw anything away. We're gonna take these lips and we're gonna stick them back into place. We want that red to stay nice and red, right? So let's cover it up. We don't want anybody looking at our lips. Stop looking at her lips. Don't look at them. They're perfect as is. We don't need no. We don't need your input on the lips. All right. So we can cover those back up. Bam. Hopefully, you know your little your your spray adhesive is strong enough that it still sticks. Obviously, it helps if you let your paints dry. Um, if not, you can always take some little bit of tape and just make yourself some little tape rolls and you know tape it back on if you really feel like you need it um, all I'm gonna do is just take a little bit of pieces of tape and I'm just gonna use some tape to just kind of hold it in going across just so it doesn't move also gonna cover her teeth with it just so her teeth don't get no overspray right just so it looks so that stays nice so that stays nice Save me some. <laughs> right, we're just going to cover that up real quick. Uh, no big deal. <sighs> then we have the nice, beautiful pleasure of building up the skin. So we're going to take another airbrush. In this case, I'm going to use my Wada Eclipse for this. And we're going to use some Wicked Universal Flesh Tone for this we're gonna start working our way around with this uh, to start building up our skin and honestly after we get done with this we might have to call it quits and then we'll come back and finish the skin and the eyes we're actually yeah well, I don't know yeah it's getting kind of late already. I had a late start and it's getting late, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. 
We're doing pretty good progress, honestly. Going faster than I thought. So, mixing up about 4 to 1 with the Universal Flesh Tone 4011 Reducer. We're going to use our phone here. And I would say it's a, probably a good idea to start here around the nose. And right connecting nostril to nostril. There's a nice little loop. Let me try and get you guys in there. So nostril to nostril. Right, so like there to there. If you look on the reference, you'll see that there's kind of a, a connection there. Uh, there's also a shadow kind of going up. And we're going to just kind of mute out the shadow coming out from the inside. And as well as kind of mute out the end of the nostril here with a little bit of a shadow going in. And it's okay to build it up, and if you think you went a little too heavy, it's all right because we're gonna still come back in with the detail flesh tone, um, and it kind of it's a good way to correct yourself. So just kind of going around the nose, the bottom of the nose. Again, use your phone. Focus in on on just that area. Don't worry about everything else. Focus in it one thing that I used to do a lot was to take a piece of tape or a roll of tape, a used up roll of tape and put some tape on it and then I would stick it, right? Um, and then you kind of just stay focused in on that area. It also forces you to stay like really nice and close because you can't get overspray on the edges. Um, I obviously don't do that anymore <laughs> uh, and, and on, I wouldn't recommend you get used to doing it that way because you'll get nice hard edges um, from the tape roll but as a way of training your eye to kind of stay focused um, it, it helps so bring it in the universal flesh tone around and build up the nose and so you're going to kind of do it like the monochromatic one right so you're going to use your Use your reference, and you're going to kind of want to do it all in the universal flesh tone, right? So all the dark tones and everything you see, you're going to do it with this universal flesh tone. And then we're going to come back, and we're going to separate some of those darker tones and hit them again only with the detail flesh tone, right? So they're honestly like i i used to do this process using uh the colors sand peach uh, light brown dark brown um, but using these flush tones i found it uh, really nice and easy and i would just i would save you the hassle and i would just recommend you get these uh, to be quite honest with you So just bringing in the, the, the shading off the nose all the way up, kind of giving myself using the markings to know where my shading goes. Again, this picture is so detailed that you can see like her makeup's like crumpled in and stuff. And that's kind of why I chose this picture because it was just, you know, it has all the detail. So depending on how detailed you want to get, it's quite possible you get so detailed that you can see her imperfections. Um, if that's really something you wanted to do. Um, but again, I'm just going to go ahead and do some little pours, you know. 
kind of set it up for bringing back in the white highlights as well. I would recommend at this stage you also do the same if you don't want to do any skin texture. And my, you know, advice on this is kind of just, I spend a lot of time looking at my skin, right? So I'm on YouTube. I, you know, you guys don't see my face a whole lot, but when you do, I try to keep my face like clear right like I don't want to have no big pimples on my face or no bruises or you know cuts or scrapes or anything like nothing like that right I'm trying to look as presentable as possible so one of the things I do is always you know look at my face wake up in the morning look at my face make sure you know I'm, I'm looking good um, for the most part right you know obviously I'm not going to shave every day because that's part of the the problem if you shave too much then your face starts getting all rough and stuff um, so I don't mind a little bit of facial hair um, but I, I look at my face right so I go in the mirror I'm, I'm looking closely and that's kind of where I get the good impressions and when I find photos like this where I'm able to zoom in and kind of look at the you know the details of people's skin it really helps a lot once you actually start painting is you have a pretty good idea so one thing I notice on my skin and on a lot of people's skin is you know not so much the dirtiness of the pore because a lot of people have really clean pores but a lot of the pores either have an indention you know where they're just like um, you know it's like a, a either a, a pit or a, a you know a divot you know where it's either pointing in or pointing out um, and the best way to achieve something like that is just do some little stippling, right? And it gives you that nice little effect. So you see me do this little stippling kind of effect all the time. Um, and obviously, like, look at the size of my finger on that. So you can really get in close on these paintings and, you know, it, it really gives it a nice detailed look when you do that nice stippling. Also, like, really fine lines so you'll see her skin has kind of these these ridges going down and even though we're working with our universal flesh tone first um, it's really useful and helpful and it, it shows in the end when you come in and you do a lot of that detail coming in first so I'm just doing you see those little strokes side to side starts building up that texture if you zoom in on the side of her nose right there she kind of has this they're not, they're not so much um, pores, you know, but it's more like her skin. We're just gravity is kind of pulling her skin right under her eyes there. And it's making these ridges that go side to side. Um, and that's just the way life is, you know, it just can pull you from side to side sometimes. So it's all I want to do is just work my way around. I like to kind of stay in this, you know, in an area, and you can see I'm kind of staying around this nose real quick. And it helps uh, to stay in an area because um, you want to start building up a tone, and then you want to start spreading it around, right? So one thing I used to do a lot was try to get ahead of myself and try to fill in the whole thing and uh, sometimes you get good you know at, at doing it and especially on t-shirts if you're working fast you know sometimes covering the whole thing really uh, just helps speed the process along but one thing it also stop like happens is you start losing the detail of like some of the definitions that that go into people's faces right so it, it just helps to do a little you know detail and build it up little by little whereas you know if you kind of just build up one tone and then you get a little too dark on one side and then you kind of have to go back anyway right so it helps to have a tone and set it and then kind of move that tone around so all I'm doing is you know I've set the tone here with the nose and I'm kind of building that around and using that as a basis of how light and dark I have to go in certain areas <sighs> Jeez, why, why did I find that was a little bit harder to explain than I meant it to be? 
I went into the sentence knowing what I wanted to say, and then I left the sentence not knowing what I wanted to say. <laughs> Does that ever happen to anybody? <laughs> uh, my eye came off, so I'm just make sure I stick that back on. Stay on there. All right, so I'm just kind of going around, working my way off that nose now, and building up that detail. A little bit of stroke side to side. Just slight pulls on that trigger while I'm moving. And give us that nice little skin texture that's happening right here. A little bit of like hatching is what I would call it. We got a not really wrinkles, but we got, you know, the indention of the eye. She also has like some bronze makeup. So if you wanted to mix up the bronze and really go with, go all out on her makeup, you really can as well. I'm not gonna really do that. I do want her eye though. The eye would be nice if it stayed in place. <sighs> Great. There you go. It fell into a crack. I had to get it out of the crack. All right. I'm just going to take a piece of tape real quick. Make sure it doesn't go anywhere anymore. Oh, come on. Can't even keep it in my fingers. All right, now let's stick it back on. Now I would like to see you fly away, huh? Let me see you fly away now. Not so tough anymore. All right, so when you're working on this side, one thing you'll notice is her uh, on her eye here. One thing you'll notice if you zoom in on her eye is her eyelid on the bottom has uh, makeup on it, right, obviously. But it, there's like a, an indention, right? So right off of her eye, she has a little bit of a light shadow and then there's a dark shadow just a little bit under it, right? So you can, I'm gonna use a shield to just kind of start building up where that's gonna be. Right, just a little bit like that, just so that we know and we kind of have that marked off. Go around the top. And this is pretty much it. We're going to start building this tone and working our way around. But by now we've spent an hour on the lips. So yeah. But I'm going to bring it back down over here on the nose. We've worked a little bit of way on the on that side. I'm going to just finish up around here to the nose, connect the nose down to the lips and kind of finish up this side of the eye over here um, on this eye so that we could uh, wrap it up for today and we'll come back next week with the rest of the painting. So you see how you have that nice hard edge right there, right? So you don't have to uh, you could even shade in all the way up into it and it won't cover right so it makes it really easy to keep your nose nice and defined where it goes and just bring in your skin color all the way around 
got some nice little shadow coming off her nose right here. There's some nice little freckle action. See, since we kept our shields here, we can use the edge of that shield to really build the shadow up off of our lips without worrying about hitting the red and or having to cut another shield or anything like that just for that specific part. We can bring our shadowing right up in on off of that. Right up in on off of that. You heard what I mean. You heard me what I said. You heard me with my lips moving. All right, bring that nice little stippling all the way around. Take some of this. Start building up this side. And if you really zoom in on that picture you see that there's a lot of texture on this skin nice little stippling and this universal flesh tone um, really good color to get all that nice little detail in there Doing those nice little dots, the nice little wiggle jiggle. And then hitting it with a little bit of shading afterwards. You can see that nice effect. Nice little dots. A little bit of shading. A little bit more dots. A little bit more shading. Right, and all I'm doing is looking up, painting, looking back down. I'm gonna move a little bit, so I move my, I move it on over here on my phone. And I really have to stress on the phone because, um, you know, that's something I didn't have back in the day. You know, the only option was to print it out or have a, a photocopy of some sort. Um, so nowadays everybody has a phone. It's a really big game changer and you should take full advantage of it <laughs> um, You know, it's, it's it's an amazing tool so You could focus and zoom in on all these little places and, and get a good look at the skin and Really get that texture in there All I'm doing is working little areas at a time working my way around Wherever I see that it needs some, you know, shading or texture or whatever it is, and just come back and add it in. And we're still just working with the universal flesh tone. Obviously, she's pretty light skinned. If you have somebody that's a little bit darker skinned or something, maybe you want to lay down um, uh, a good layer, a good coat of Universal Flesh Tone first before you start uh, kind of shading in and maybe you want to add a, a little drop of brown onto your Universal Flesh Tone or your Detail Flesh Tone to just really start um, giving you some of that detail there. All right, everybody's different, different shades, different folks. This is a universal flesh tone, which is a, it'll fit a lot of people, right? But it's not going to fit everybody. So that's all I'll say about that. All I'm doing is bring it around. Now you could, by all means, just shade it in just like we did on the monochrome one. You could get away with it a lot better on on a white and black painting, but when it comes to color like this, and you just kind of shade it, the person ends up looking more like you know a piece of plastic or like a model figure uh, more than 
you know, an actual person. Having all this detail into the skin um, really gives it that nice, it's almost like a picture, um, right? So, but here going this way, I see that we do have an area that kind of just needs to be colored in like so. Just going to use a nice little soft effect to really nice shadowy effect to really build up the shadow on our face here and kind of bring it around softly again it's always good to build up your tone you don't want to just mash it in there just kind of work your way around slowly um, and all I'm re the reason I'm coloring this in is because it's not there's no white over here right there's no white reflections no white highlights nothing like that everything on this side of the face and kind of all the way around here um, is pretty much this universal flesh tone color it's kind of just all filled in right so we want to give ourselves that that good nice tone to build up off of gonna mark off my eyebrow just shade it in all around that and take that off all right so now we know where our eyebrow is nothing too crazy but we could also just kind of shade in on the skin there without worrying too much So once we got all that nice little shadows around, I'm just gonna kind of work my way all the way around the, the bottom of the face here. And might as well connect it to the other side. Break on through to the other side. Shade in the neck. Let's bring it all the way around. And we're still going to go back and add detail over this. All I'm doing right now is just giving me a good base for that. And again, all I've do, done so far is just use that universal flesh tone. I haven't really started doing any other colors yet. I'm just working my way around gently with this color. Using the reference picture as a good guide. really hard to draw photorealistic people without a, a a good picture or a good guide of what you're painting you know so it just helps to make sure you have a good picture and the, the better quality picture the better usually the painting that you're going to get you know so kind of just working this all the way around wherever i see that it needs some color I think that's going to be it for today, guys. So we've been going about an hour and a half. And we kind of knew going in that this was going to take a while, so no big surprise there. Especially when we want to get it nice and detailed the way that we're doing. It just takes a little bit of time. But I'm going to just go ahead and stop there. Make sure I don't skip anything or do anything extra. And when we come back next week, we'll finish her up. I'll walk you guys in through the rest of the universal flesh tone. Um, and then we'll add the detail flesh tone right over that. As well as finish off her eyes and her hand here. 
and finish up using our mud color to kind of finish it all up in. Um, as always, make sure you keep your stencils. So I'm going to keep everything nice and tidy here. And make sure I keep it all in, in organized in order um, so that when it comes back, because we will still use that stencil on here, I promise you, um, you know, it'll be nice and, and still there. So anyway, hopefully that helps some of you guys out going so far. Uh, we'll come back next week. I encourage you guys to work at it all this week. You know, just take it easy. Take your time. Build up all that little texture in there. You know, obviously you see me do it so quick, but you know, when you're at home, you can take a little bit more time, do it real nice and smooth, real nice and easy. Um, and then we'll come back next week and we'll finish it off. I'll show you how to do this nice darker area over here, um, the eye, and as well as how to add the eyebrow and all that. Uh, so we still got another good hour and a half, maybe two hours uh, next next week to finish this up. So anyway, guys, I'll get out of your hair. Thank you guys all for watching. And make sure you keep an eye out for next Thursday. We'll be back to finish this up. There's going to be a uh, video dropping on Sunday. You guys can enjoy that. Uh, enjoy the rest of your week. Have a good weekend. And we'll see you guys next Thursday. As always, thank you for being part of the Skull Squad. If you're part of the Skull Squad, oh, I have to stand up. Oh, that feels good. Um, big shout out to Createx um, and all you guys uh, for watching the video. We'll come back next week and we'll get this knocked out. So, yeah. Thank you guys all for watching again. We'll see you guys next week with the rest. Bye-bye.